Hello everybody, I'm Paul Beckwith. In the last video, I chatted about how anthropogenic climate change has slowed agricultural productivity growth. And it's done it already today. You know, a lot of studies look at what, what will happen to agriculture and food production versus uh, consumption, global consumption, you know, in say five years or 10 years or 20 years. But this study looks at today. So it, it, it basically uses what's called an econometric model. And it looks at the weather effects on global agriculture, total factor productivity or TFP. Uh, so agricultural research has increased, of course, food productivity growth. But anthropogenic climate change is taking a big chunk out of the gains from the agricultural research. So this study looks at from 1961 to 2000, and it found that anthropogenic climate change has reduced global agricultural TFP by 21% since 1961. That's equivalent to losing the last seven years of productivity growth. Uh, in warmer regions like Africa, Latin America, and the Caribbean, the loss is 26 to 34 percent reductions. Also, if you look at the latter period versus the earlier, earlier period in the study, the um, latter period is showing that climate change has made food production much, much more vulnerable to, to, uh, to, to uh, reductions of, of productivity. In fact, the first period you, was about 10% reduction. The second period was about 30% reduction for an average um, between 1961 and 2020 of 20%. So I chatted for the entire video on the details, but now in this video, I'm just gonna go to the paper and I'm gonna show you the, the figures of the paper, okay? Some people like things, um, you know, like, like like more talking and less visuals, less graphics, and other people, it's the other way around. So I'm catering to both, both sets of people here. Okay, so this is a paper. Uh, Anthropogenic climate change has slowed global agricultural productivity growth. Okay, so these are the basic, this is the recent trends in the agricultural productivity and the climate. So this is country level, um, uh, the, the uh, total food productivity, okay, um, the index. And the gray lines are all the different countries. And the countries that exhibit growth of greater than 2% per year in this TFP index, which starts at 100 in 1961, okay, they exhibited 2.28 uh, times increase from 100 to 228 percent. The countries in the next growth rate, 1.5 to 2 percent per year, had this growth rate, and then so on as we go down. The average of all of the countries globally showed this particular growth rate here, and then of course there were lower, um, there were countries with much lower growth in, these, um, in this food production index. So this is an index really that shows uh, you know, how much food is being produced within different countries and globally. And of course, there's statistics of it. There's deviations from country to country. There's spreads. This is the map. Um, so this is, the, uh, this is a map showing the different regions of the world. So these are the regions with high TFP growth percentages per year over here and the, the dark blue regions. And then the regions with 1.5 to 2% are the, the, the uh, not so dark blue. And then as you get lighter, it's less, that's one, one to 1.5% 1 per year. And you'll see that North, North America is like that and large regions of India are like that, parts of China are like that. And then you get the even smaller growth here, zero point, um, the, 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 uh, so two, three, yeah, it's these guys, the smaller growth here, 0 0.5 to one, and then zero to 0 0.5, and the negative growth here, less than zero in these regions. So, so it's very unequal around the world. And in fact, some of the 
poorest areas are getting getting get poorer even and and have uh, a lot of food stress you know in these regions here this is a uh, country level temperature and this is the um, global mean of rise in temperature this is with human and natural forcings and the this curve here is only with natural forcing so if you take out the human component you actually don't see an increase. You see maybe a slight decrease even. But with climate change, we get this curve here. And this is country level temperature. And you see this number is actually you know, higher, higher, than one, higher than one degree Celsius. Now, if you look at the country level precipitation, um, again, with um, natural forcings only, the gray and human and natural forcings is the uh, brownish. Then you see that there's not much difference between those in terms of the precipitation in different countries. But we know that wet areas are getting wetter, dry areas are getting drier. Okay, so this is the result. This is the, the, the TFP growth, um, and this is the um, with temperature. So what you see, the temperature is from 5 to 30. So this is the mean temp, it's, it's been, and there's different countries that fit in different temperature slots. And this is the green season mean temperature. So the growing season mean temperature. You know, Russia is, of course, much colder, and the growth of the TFP is higher. Um, France, uh, China, the United States, India, Australia, Brazil, Nigeria, and the zero crossing point is somewhere here. Uh, zero is about, uh, yeah, about 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, when you get to countries that where the mean green season temperature is higher than about 20, 21 Celsius, then we get actually declines in agricultural productivity. It's just getting too hot to grow, to, to maintain high yields and to grow crops. Okay, so that's with temperature and this is with precipitation. So with precipitation, it's a nonlinear curve. This is almost linear going down, you know, it's bent a bit. This is very nonlinear and it peaks at about 500 millimeters of precipitation. So you've got the wetter countries here, Brazil, Nigeria, India, and so on. Most of the countries are sitting in this region here, which is about uh, 160, uh, 120 to 160, or sorry, 160 to 180 millimeters of precipitation in the growing season. Okay, uh, for some reason, oh, there we go. Okay, I'm trying to get this. This is not my computer. For some reason, whenever I open this paper and look at it, it's very hard for me to go f to this page. It's very slow and shaky, and I don't. It, it's in the software. It's not my, the computer. But this is the TFP impacts, um, and this is where we get the 20% drop between 1961 and uh, 2020. 20% drop globally okay so and this shows you this is a very key graph here because what this shows you is this is what the blue line would be is a counterfactual without anthropogenic climate change okay so if there's no climate change this is what we would expect we would go up to about 210 from we'd go from about 100 uh, the food index to 210 so this is, you know, increasing technology, increasing yields, et cetera, brings you up to 210. But because of anthropogenic climate change, we're on the red line here. So you could already, this, go, this peaks at about, about 190. So we've already got a 20 drop here from what there would have been without climate change to what there is with, you know, in our present world, a 20 drop based on 100 baseline. That's a 20% reduction. Okay, so this is where, you know, this is showing that 20%, you know, I said 21% at the beginning. Okay, so this is where the reduction is occurring. Here are some statistics showing a whole bunch of different models, and it shows you some of the variables the, 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 that are changed and so on. You know, here's the baseline model, which shows, you know, it's a 20% drop in TFP, 20% drop in an impact on global total total food, uh, fact, total factor uh, production of food. Um, and then the variance is it's minus 10 to um, minus, um, what's that? That's about 35 or something. 
this is going down to almost 40. Okay, so that's the variance, but it's about a 21% drop. Okay, um, this is how it varies with different countries. So this is where the, this is the impact of anthropogenic climate change around the globe. So these two graphs are crucial. These are the, probably the, the, the most important in the whole paper. And you can see the impact of uh, the, the percentage drop in total food TFP is, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, over 40% drop in these countries in Sub-Sahara Africa. Huge drops, you know, warming very quickly. And there's, there's uh, not much impact up in, up in the far northern region. So there's much less impact in Canada and northern Russian stuff. But there's not a lot of food grown up there anyway. You know, the U.S. Um, is in th this, this, uh, this is the, the light yellowish and then the darker color, minus 10 to minus 15 percent drop in lots of Asia and, and, and the U.S. So you can look at it here. So this is the mean. Okay, um, okay, so this is the mean here. So it's about, you know, close to minus 20%, you know, with the variance. Okay, this is the global number. And then you can look. So there's the, the, the least drop is in Europe and, and Central Asia. Okay, and then North America. And then um, South, the Southwest Pacific, Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean is hit much harder. The Near, East, uh, the Near East and North Africa is hit extremely hard. And then Africa overall, especially Sub-Sahara Africa, you know, the drop is enormous. So you have actually big chunks of Africa where the drop is worse than minus 40%. And that's between 1961 and 2020. And that's how much is shaved off the, the, uh, you know, the, the food productivity um, index. Okay, so this is enormous. This is an enormous drop, and this has already happened. So I'm going to go down uh, a bit more. So this is an image. This is an image showing. This is the composition of global agricultural production. It shows you the the, the ratios of the cereals being produced, the non-cereal crops, and the livestock. Okay, so. What you can see, most studies just look at the yields of cereals to determine what, what global food production, you know, from, from agriculture, you know, agriculture and livestock. So we're not talking about oceans. We're not talking about marine food at all. This identical study should be done with the marine food supply system. And then combining that and this would give the overall picture for food in the world. Uh, but that number is hovering about 20% or so. So if you do your whole study just on yields of cereals, how can you, you know, it's really hard to make an assessment of the whole plant, you know, the whole total food uh, productivity, you know, just based on that. And then these are different models where like this one here is the 10, if you take, uh, take out the 10% of the coldest countries and then replot the data. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go into the details of all these things. This one here, they just ran study after study you know, once they had their model. This is without 10% of the hottest countries. So, you know, um, and uh, they also looked at, uh, the next thing they looked at was, um, they, they looked at from 1962 to 1988, the curve. Okay, this is the curve, the drop from 1962 to 1988. And then if you compare that to the curve from 1989 to present, um, it's much, much steeper, right? This is more like a 30% drop whereas the previous interval um, up to 1962 to 1988, about a 10% drop, and uh, 1989 to 2015, about a 30% drop. And if you take both intervals, the drop was um, about uh, 20%. And then what else did they do? They, did, uh, they took the different time periods in the t without the 10% of coldest countries, 10% of warmest countries, Etc. Okay, so that's the gist of the study. Um, I think, uh, like I said, uh, the most significant um, result is right here. You know, the, these two plots here. Okay, this shows globally and overall by country, and then this shows a map of the distribution. So the global food supply has already been severely reduced already by 
anthropogenic climate change. Thanks for listening.